Amen. Welcome, Mr. Dusty, everybody. Hey, friends, you can have a seat. Good morning. I am so glad to be here with you this morning. This is one of my favorite, favorite things that I get to do. What a fantastic way to get to start our day. We get to come together and we can sing worship songs to God and then we get to talk about his truth. I mean, that's a great way to start every day, which you could do at home. You could listen to some praise music and sing and read a little bit of the Bible and start every day like now. You don't get to be with all your friends if you're doing it at home, but that's why you get to do it in chapel at school. So I'm Mr. Dusty. Uh, I'm a pastor in town and I have three kiddos that go to Brazos Christian School. And my big boy is a freshman. He's in the, the big school, the high school. And then I have a, a daughter, Mariah, who's in seventh grade, and then a fourth grader, Judah. So we love this school, and we've been here a long time. This morning, we're going to talk about the gospel. Does anybody know what the word gospel means? Just the word gospel. Not like explaining all of the gospel, but what does the word gospel mean? Yes, ma'am, in the back. No? Okay, then, sir, you right there. You had your hand up real t tall and proud. Yes, sir. What is it? You don't know? Okay, I'll, wait, one more, one more, right here. Yeah. The Bible has the good news in it, yes. But the word gospel means good news. Has anyone ever gotten good news before? Oh, yeah, isn't it a good thing when you get good news? Like you find out your grandma and grandpa are coming to visit. Whoa, good news. Or you find out you got a good grade on that test you studied hard for. Woo! Good news! Well, today we're going to talk about some good news, okay? And it's going, to be it's going to be good news, and then bad news, and then good news again. Hey, does anybody know how to use their imagination? Okay, good, then this is going to go perfect. All right. I brought some little things here for us so we can use our imaginations this morning. Does anyone like to use their imagination? Oh, good. Good, good, good. Then this will be perfect. All right. This is my transformer table. Whoa. Oh, one of y'all have one of these too? Okay. Now, look at that. Ooh, a vase. That's fun. And then, oh, 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 that's kind of heavy. Uh, a shoe box. Okay. All right, here we go. What's gospel mean? Good news. Look at that. We're learning already. I love it. Okay. So the good news starts back at the very beginning. Who was there in the very beginning? God. That's right. God was there in the very beginning. So here's what I got. Look at this. Ooh, this is where our imagination. Look at this jar of liquid gold. Whoa. This jar of liquid gold represents the purity and holiness of God. And the good world that he created. Do you know when he made humans in the very beginning, Adam and Eve? He made us in perfect friendship with him. And the goal was to be friends with God forever and ever and ever. How awesome does that sound? Woo! Okay, but now it said good news, then bad news. Here comes the bad news. Wah, wah, look at this jar of sin. Ooh, it's dark and it's not good. It's bad news. Because what happened? Adam and Eve didn't trust God. They disobeyed God. They ate the fruit that God asked them not to eat. And so when that happened, sin brought brokenness and death and separation into the world. And so where Adam and Eve used to be close friends with God, they used to walk together in the garden. They used to talk together and spend time together. All of a sudden, there was separation. They were pulled apart. And we saw lying, and we saw hiding, and we saw shame, and all of the blaming each other, and this place where they used to have safe, secure friendships. Now there was all this brokenness and bad stuff, and that's all because of sin. Well, then there was good news. Does anybody know what good news came next? Just yell it out. What happened? Jesus, that's right. So look at this. Here's our jar of Jesus' blood that he sacrificed on the cross. Now remember, we're imagining. It's not really Jesus' blood, okay? But that's what we're imagining, okay? So this was the really good news that came again. Because sin, if you're my friend, and sin was separating us from being able to be friends, then we, we're sad. We need someone to come in and wash away the sin and take away the sin so that we can be friends again. 
And that's what Jesus did. Sin separated us from God and we couldn't be friends with him. But because of what Jesus did, living a perfect life, dying on the cross and raising from the dead, we all had the opportunity for our sin to be forgiven and washed away, taken away so that we can be back in friendship with God. So do you want to see? Okay, so here we go. This is you right here, all right? In the beginning, God made you for relationship with him. So here's that pure gold. Ready? Let's see. Pure liquid gold. Look at that. Woo! Yeah, I know. That's so cool. But then sin entered the world. And who here has ever sinned? Yeah, the Bible says all of us have. So if you don't think you have, you might check in with your parents or your teacher. They might be able to help you with that. Okay? So here we go. This was perfect and pure gold and it was beautiful in the way it was designed to be a friendship with God. But then sin entered the world and what happened? Oh no. Oh, it got all dark and yucky. Oh yeah. Ew, that's exactly right. Ew, ew sin. Okay. But look, then what happened? Then what happened? That's right. Jesus lived a perfect life for us. He died on the cross, the consequences we deserved, and he rose from the dead, telling us that he could forgive our sin and make us right with him. So watch this. Watch this. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's, um, it's still dark. Oh, I know why. How many people in the world did Jesus die for? All of them. Will everybody in the whole world get to be forgiven? No, not everybody. Only the people who have faith in Jesus. Only the people who believe that Jesus died on the cross for them. Think about it. If I bought this headlamp and I offered it to you as a gift... Let's say I bought everyone in the room a headlamp and I offered everyone a headlamp. And some of you said, no, I don't want your gift. Would it do you any good? No, it would only be good for those who said, thank you, Mr. Dusty. It's the same way with Jesus. He died on the cross for everyone. But every single person has to decide if they believe that Jesus was real. And they believe that Jesus was God. And he died on the cross for you. For you personally. He died for everyone, but you have to decide if that's real. And then if he rose from the dead, proving that he's God and he can forgive sins. So look at this. I happen to have a jar of faith right here. And when you have faith in Jesus Christ and what he's done for you, Let's see what happens to all this messy brokenness. All this messy brokenness that's in the world. What's going to happen when we have faith in what Jesus has done for us? Look! No, it's not even done yet. Look at that. It's removing the sin and going back to clear. Going back to pure going back to what we were designed for. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yes! So here's what I... Woo! Yeah, you can cheer for that. That's good. Woo! So here's what I want you to remember from today. Today, we've talked about what people call the gospel. And what does gospel mean? Good news! And in the beginning, we were all created and designed to have a close friendship with God. But then the sad part comes, there's sin that makes everything messy and dirty and ugly and separates us from God. But then more good news, we don't have to stay separated from God. Jesus came down from heaven and was born as a baby and lived a perfect life. And he died on the cross so that, yeah, for our sins. Not for his sins, because he didn't have any. For our sins. It's kind of like if you did something wrong at home and you got grounded, 
And instead of you having to go be grounded, one of your friends was grounded for you, even though they didn't do anything wrong. That's what Jesus did for us. We deserve to be separated from God. We deserve to die on the cross. But Jesus didn't want that. So he died on the cross for us so that we can say, thank you for doing that for me, Jesus. And when we believe that Jesus did that for us, and he proved who he was by rising from the dead, then Jesus' sacrifice and resurrection washes us white as snow. And we get to be back in friendship with him right away and forever. So that's what people mean when they say, I believe in Jesus. They believe that they had sin in their life. They needed forgiveness. And Jesus was the only one through his life, death, and resurrection that could wash their sins clean and let them be back in friendship with him. So is that good news? Let me hear you say, that's good news. Yes. Okay, let's pray and then you can go with your teachers. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much that you love us. God, I thank you that you created every person in this room and that you love them so, so much. And you didn't want them to be separated from you. You wanted them to be in friendship with you. So you sent your only son, Jesus. And Jesus, you came, lived a perfect life and died on the cross and rose from the dead so that when we believe that that's true and we say, thank you, we are washed clean and we know we get to live with you forever. Let us celebrate that good news today. And let us tell everyone that we know about the good news that's offered to them. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen.